Dear Dita, hello everyone. I hope you are having a nice day. Uh, today we will learn the rules about uh, the feminine nouns. Maybe you are thinking, why am I talking so much about the noun in Albanian? The reason, the main reason is that once you know the rules and how to form the definite, indefinite, plural and the singular, you will uh, have it easier to speak because you will have the confidence to speak. Oh, I am using the right form. I am saying it grammatically correct. Right? That is why, actually, I have noticed that many foreigners uh, who have learned Albanian, this is where they are lacking uh, practice, in the nouns. So, this is one of the reasons why I am focusing too much. Today we will talk about the feminine noun in Albanian and uh, what you need to remember first. We need to remember that feminine nouns end in a vowel. But we have few nouns, few feminine nouns, which end in a consonant. What is the definite form of the feminine nouns? A or ja. Okay, so let's see. First, there are these rules we said. The first rule is if the noun ends in a stressed E. In this case, to make the definite form, we add A. For example, Shtopi. Shtopi. Shtopi is a house. What did we say? We add A. Shtopia. Shtopia. The house. Or kuti. Kuti, it means a box. Kutia. Okay, the second rule there are some nouns which end in a. Uh. In this case, uh, to make definite form, we delete a uh, and we add a uh, instead. For example, so they end in a, uh, we add. Uh, for example, mole, mole, mole is an apple. What did we say? We delete or we omit the a uh and replace it with a. Uh. So, mola, the apple. When I first learn, uh, started to learn English when I was little, this is the first word that I learned. I guess you know also this word in Albanian before I tell you. Three, the rule number three is when uh, there are some nouns which end in E, and in this case, to make it definite, we delete the E and we add ja. So they end in E, we delete the E and add ja. So, E, delete. For example, Lule, Lule, Lule it means flower, so how would we say? Lulia, the flower, Lulia. Again, the fourth rule, there are uh, nouns which end in a stressed vowel except for the vowel E. For example, they end in a stressed A, E or O. In this case, to make the definite form, we add ja. We do not delete any vowel in the end. For example, you have the word idea. Ide. Ide. So, stressed vowel. E, O, A. We add Ja, ide, ide, you can notice that it's stressed. Idea. One uh, more thing, if you cannot uh, distinguish whether the vowel is stressed or not, for example, here it's unstressed, here it's stressed, if you cannot distinguish and you probably, maybe you will write it wrong, don't 
worry. Because when you pronounce it, actually it sounds the same. Lule lulia, ide idea, or stupi stupi ya. Okay, they always uh, sound like ya, ya, ya. Instead, only this one doesn't sound ya. Okay, again, the fifth rule are the nouns that end in a consonant, but not in any consonant. The noun that end in er, el, er, el, ul. So these nouns, uh, to make the definite, we delete the a uh, and we add the a uh, after the consonant. For example, we have the word umbrella. Cha der. Cha der. So, how would we say? We delete the er uh, and we add a uh, chadra. The same for other words, which I will write in the description below, so you can check what other words. Uh, we have in this group okay so guys you noticed that it's not so difficult okay I may I keep in my mind that the feminine nouns they end in a vowel mostly there are some few nouns which end in a consonant which are which belong to this group but you uh, don't forget that also in Albanian we have nouns which have two genders which can be feminine or masculine. Also we have these nouns which can change gender from masculine to feminine, from uh, feminine to masculine and vice versa. So that is why we need to learn this properly so we know later on. Okay? Uh, let us practice with this since before we have taken the demonstrative pronouns in Albanian. So we have taken Q. Q it means this. Q is a demonstrative pronoun used for things, people, objects that are near us and is used for um, masculine nouns, right? And we have kyo. Kyo also means this. It's used for demonstrative uh, pronouns or for objects, things and people that are near us but is for feminine nouns. Why am I saying this? Let's Try to see together. This is shtupi. It's a feminine noun because the definite form is shtupia. So what definite, what uh, demonstrative pronoun I will use? Kyo. Kyo is shtupi. If it is near. Which pronoun I will use if it is far? What is for the feminine nouns? Ayo. Ayo. That is a house. Again, mol is feminine. So, kyo is mol. If the object is near. If the object is far, ayo is mol. Lule. Kyo is lule. That, this is a flower. Why we say kyo? Because it's feminine. The noun lule is feminine gender. So, kyo is lule. Or if it is far, ayo is lule. Ide. Ide is feminine. What is the definite form? Idea. So, kyo is ide. Oh, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. Kyo is ide emira. Or, if it is oh, an idea that like, wow, that is, that is a good idea. Ayo ist ide emira. Okay? And chadar again belongs to the feminine. Kyo ist chadar. Ayo ist chadar. If it is far. What means chadar? It means umbrella. If we had a masculine uh, noun, for example, book, liber. Q is liber. Liber is masculine. It ends in a consonant. This is a book. But if the book is far, I is liber. That is a book. Okay? So, 
Next time we will practice the feminine nouns and also the plural of these demonstrative pronouns. Thank you very much and I also want to thank you uh, my followers or subscribers in YouTube because they are following the lessons and they are being very uh, correct with the homework. Uh, so, guys, next time let's practice together the feminine nouns in a text. See you next time. Miru Pavshim. Miru Pavshim.